Disney has just announced Star Wars Month and Toontown is back. Also, Indiana Jones Adventure has just reopened at Disneyland and we're going to be answering your questions, so stick around. What's up, everybody? My name is Brian. My name is Jacob. And welcome to RTD Adventures. We're going to be covering some new news stories in the world of Disney, starting off with um, Star Wars Month that was just announced recently. So actually, we're getting ready to go to Disneyland for May the 4th, and I could not be any more excited that Disney has just announced that the entire month from May 1st all the way through June 4th is going to be Star Wars Month at the Disneyland Resort. And that means that there's a lot of really cool Star Wars things that are going to be available and new just for that time period. So during this time, Space Mountain will have the overlay of Hyper Space Mountain, which includes uh, different special effects and of course the legendary John Williams uh, music score from Star Wars. There's also going to be some special Star Wars merchandise and food offerings. So there's no details on specifically what this is going to be, but we've seen some cool May the 4th uh, memorabilia like t-shirts and pins that have been released in the past. Also, talking about the food, I really hope they bring back the Darth by Chocolate. Um, this is one of my favorite desserts at Disneyland, and while there's no official word yet again on the foods, we can look forward to some really cool and interesting dishes offered. Also, most likely this will mean that we will be seeing new um, and expansive uh, characters actually within Tomorrowland and Galaxy's Edge. So that's something to look forward to, like, look forward to during this month. So as of recording this, that's all the information we really know about Star Wars Month, but but it's probably not going to be too much longer because that is only just over a month away till it happens. So expect more news about Star Wars Month to be coming out shortly. All right, Mickey's Toontown is officially open in Disneyland. The long-awaited reimagining of Toontown. Now, it's been quite a while since uh, Toontown's really had a fresh coat of paint. Um, but uh, from what we hear, this is a really, really cool uh, reimagining of the town. Uh, now, we haven't actually got to experience this ourselves, so all the information we got for you right now is just going to be secondhand information, but we will be going there in May, so we'll be able to give you a firsthand account of these updates. So a part of this reimagining, uh, the colors within the lands are just vibrant, full of life, just like the, you know, when it was originally opened. Um, there's new music that you'll hear as you're walking through the streets of Toontown, um, new foods, uh, Daisy's Kitchen, right? Is that Daisy's yeah, Kitchen? Daisy's Kitchen. Yes, I'm super excited to eat there. Um, new offerings of food, and uh, they seem to have taken Clarabelle's uh, out of Toontown, probably because there's also a Clarabelle's in DCA. Um, but uh, yep, lots of new food offerings, new places to sit and eat. Um, they include almost like a turf style grass, almost like to um, promote their park. Yeah, like a um, picnic like area. Like a picnic area, yeah. Right. Oh yeah, lots of cool merch also promoting that as well, whether it's uh, picnic baskets or uh, picnic blankets. But yeah, lots of cool things coming your way in Toontown. And don't forget about the new ride, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Now this opened actually a little bit before Toontown did, but this is um, being offered back with the land along with some reimagining of uh, Chippendale's uh, Gadget Coaster. It used to be Gadget's Go Coaster, but I guess there's some new statues of the characters that are available on the ride. It's the same ride vehicle, same track, but um, that one's got a new fresh coat of paint. And all the characters actually have some new costumes too. So Pete, for the very first time, is yeah. a, a character you can actually meet in the park. And Mickey's got a great new outfit. Um, he's got his uh, stylish new jacket, as you can see here in this picture. Um, but uh, a lot of the characters had a little bit of a refresh. Mm -hmm. um, Goofy's house is also now available to walk through. And there's some really cool looking uh, interactive elements mm -hmm. to that house as well. Oh, yeah. And it seems like Donald's house also seems to have a splash pad in front of it, mm -hmm. which is exciting. Uh, they didn't have any footage of that yet. I didn't know if it either wasn't working or if it was more of just a soft opening so they didn't have it working or up and running. But yeah, that looks awesome too. It'll be fun for the kids and adults. And guys, Indiana Jones is back. After that lengthy co closure for you know the refurbishment that was going down, uh, we have way better lights, updated music. Um, the snake moves again, so that's pretty awesome. But yeah, it's back. And you know, I always thought that the snake used to move, but for the last several years, it wasn't, and so I thought maybe that was just my imagination, just coming up with something there, yeah. but glad to see that the snake is moving again, glad to see that the boulder is moving the again. The boulder, that's right. Uh, um, and then just some really cool new special effect lightings uh, that, that kind of just make the ride look a little bit uh, fresher. And as announced at D23, there's a couple of restaurants in downtown Disneyland that will be closing soon. Um, so if you wanted to check out these restaurants before they close, time is running out. So the restaurant Catal, located right in the middle of downtown Disney, is a Mediterranean-inspired restaurant. This is one that's going to be closing soon. Um, it's outdoor bar, Uva bar, and cafe. 
Uh, they offer smaller bites and drinks. Um, those are both going to be closing soon uh, as part of the Disneyland Resort transformation of downtown Disney. Um, Catal is going to be replaced by a Michelin starred chef, Gaetans, Paseo, and Centrico. No, excuse my horrible pronunciation on that. Um, but uh, Paseo and Centrico. Centrico? Centrico. Centrico. Man, my Spanish is terrible. <laughs> Anyways, these two Mexican restaurants are replacing Catal after its closing, and they will, quote, offer guests a multi sensory journey Ooh. to the heart of Chef Gaetan's homeland. So there hasn't been any official closing date announced by Disney on this, but looking at the reservation calendar online, it appears as if the last available day is April 9th. Um, not too long left. That's just a couple weeks from now. So if you want to check these out before they're gone forever, make sure you take advantage of that. All right, and recently Bob Iger sent out a memo to different departments looking for redundancies and uh, they're getting ready for their layoffs, right? Mm -hmm. This is something that was announced by uh, JPEC a little while ago uh, and they announced that they're gonna be doing 7,000 layoffs along with a hiring freeze. Um, and you know, this is just the unfortunate part of Disney losing so much money from uh, the pandemic and then again, just being in a hole from uh, Disney Plus. Um, you know, they got to cut costs somewhere, right? Uh, they can't just continue to lose money. Otherwise, Disney's going to go away forever, obviously. You know, it kind of makes sense, but uh, it's, it's sad nonetheless. Um, what's likely going on here, and we don't have a lot of details yet, at least as of the, the time of recording this, but they're likely going to be doing um, these layoffs before the April 3rd um, quarterly earnings call or the yearly earnings call. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a big meeting going on, but um, this is probably going to be happening before that time. Originally announced was uh, 7,000 employees being laid off, but there's speculation it's only going to be 4,000. Because of the hiring freeze, a lot of um, vacancies have not been filled, and so this is going to make up for part of that. Again, we're, we're just speculating on this, but the parks are likely not going to see as much of a hit on layoffs just because this is the parks uh, or the company's biggest area of revenue. And so since they're making most of the money there, they don't want to cut back too much from it. They are losing a lot in some of the entertainment aspects, especially with Disney Plus, because it's got such a high operating cost with all their original content and just the way they've been running their practices. Um, so they're likely going to be scaling back more on the entertainment side. Again, just kind of speculation on our part, but look for those layoff announcements to be coming soon. All right, so recently I put out a post on our community tab asking you guys for what questions you would like to have answered, and we're gonna answer some of those now in this video. So let's turn our attention over to those questions. All right, question from Alex Jones. I would love to know more about possible expansions, additions coming to Galaxy's Edge. I don't know how much information is actually out there yet, but I love that too and think more would be amazing. So anything you could find on that would be awesome. All right, Alex. Now, we would love to see an expansion of Galaxy's Edge. I think that's something so that cool. was actually kind of needed. Um, Galaxy's Edge does kind of start to feel stale after you've been there a few times just because there's not a ton to do. Uh, however, that's not likely going to happen anytime soon. Um, Disney is still making a lot of money off of Star Wars, and they put, quite frankly, a ton of money into building it. And with the land being so new, I wouldn't count on a reimagining or any expansions on that land um, anytime in the near future. That's not to say there won't be new characters and new food offerings, mm -hmm. um, but as far as expansions or new things that are going to be offered, um, I wouldn't hold my breath, uh, at least for the next few years. All right, and from Ozzy Cat. I do love hotel and dining vlogs though, if I am pushed to give an answer, especially the Disneyland Resort hotels and any sit down food if they serve plant based. Ah, so we will be doing uh, more uh, restaurant reviews, especially at all the places we're gonna eat here coming up here in May. Uh, but just keep an eye out for that because uh, we're gonna start doing that as well. Also, we're gonna be doing a review of the hotel we're staying at. Mm. So look for more information about that coming soon as well. So from Cecilia Gonzo, I would love to know about reservations on character dining, regular dining. Uh, do they plan on getting rid of mobile orders for all the restaurants? As far as the mobile ordering goes, it seems like it's a pretty good system that's in place right now. I think Disney is happy with the way that works out. So I, I wouldn't so. count on the mobile ordering going anywhere. Um, really, if you're not really familiar with how mobile ordering works, um, that would be something to learn about because it's really pretty convenient. Mm -hmm. um, because you can order your food ahead of time and have it ready. You know, if you want to order your dinner as soon as you get to the park, you can do that and just place your order out for whatever time you think you're going to be picking up that food. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess 
that's something that we could cover as well. We haven't really done much about the mobile yeah. ordering system, but that could be something we cover in a future video, so be on the lookout for that. Yep. That's something I, I do often anyways. I do tend to use mobile order a little bit more than standing in line. I tend to gauge it though, so if like I see a short line, um, I probably won't mobile order because I'll just walk up and order. However, if it's if it's some really long line and they do offer mobile ordering, I will do take advantage of that. But yeah, we'll definitely jump on that because it's something you know we tend to use pretty often. As far as getting those reservations, we actually have a video that talks about how to get reservations at Disney Dining. So uh, we're gonna put a link to that in the description down below, so check that out. Um, specifically for character dining, the reservations work um, the same way as they would for any other dining reservation. I can't honestly talk too much about character dining though because I've never done character dining. Mm. Um, I have heard a lot about um, Goofy's Kitchen being a, a big recommendation, so um, I guess I can pass that recommendation along to you too, but you know, otherwise, check out the video in the description. It'll give you some more information about getting reservations. Mm -hmm. All right, from Karen Novak. This is gonna sound super random, but I haven't been to Disney in quite some time and I'm curious about the actual seats for the rides. It'll be my husband and I and our three girls going next year, so five people, and I'm wondering how we'd need to split up for the rides to get on. The girls will still be a little young and I'm just curious of how we'd fit into the different rides. I can't find any videos showing the seats. Now that is a very good question. Um, it, I, honestly, it just kind of depends on the ride. Um, I know, so let me think. So things in Fantasyland, typically you're probably not gonna see five people seated in one seat. Actually, and I'm just gonna tell you, most rides, you're not gonna see five people sitting by each other. Maybe in like uh, the storybook um, boat ride, mm -hmm. you might be able to just because it's kind of like lines of seats. So small typically world. small world, exactly. More Pirates. like those boat rides that carry mass people. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Jungle Cruise, things like that. Um, typically you're gonna see more either th like three and three, two and two, some one and one, depending on how old the kiddos are. Uh, but you know, things like Pirates of the Caribbean, they, they might be able to kind of uh, fudge it a little bit, just especially depends how young they are. I have seen where it fits three sitting side by side, but they let the, the tiniest little ones sit on a lap and they bring down that bar. It's not a fast ride, it's not super dangerous, so they will bring that down and they allowed it to happen for a family like that because they're not gonna tell the youngest person to wait until the whole family comes back. But, um, but you can definitely take advantage also of the rider uh, swap option, which I think we have uh, maybe linked below. So we, don't, we don't have a video on that. Oh, okay, we don't have a video on that yet. <laughs> but no, if, if you're um, worried about having to split the, the family up, you're at least gonna get everybody in the same ride vehicle for pretty much every ride that's there. Um, but you will have to split people up for rows on the different ride vehicles. Right. So that'll just be something to consider. Um, most of them will let you get two or three in a row though. So there's always a lot of things going on in Disneyland. There's news stories coming out all the time. If there is anything specific you guys would like to hear about, leave that in the comments down below. We're gonna try to bring more regular news videos like this where we can just have a little bit of discussion on those news stories and you know, kind of our thoughts on those things as well so don't be afraid to leave a comment and ask us something that you'd want to talk about if you guys are interested in hearing anything specific uh, feedback wise um, we'd be happy to answer more questions like that so what we're going to do is actually we're going to put the link in the description and we're going to throw a link up on the screen for that reservations video i just want to thank you guys once again for hanging out with us and like always thanks, thanks for, for watching, watching.